the moderate trial is aimed at a woman carrying a baby with a diaphragmatic hernia. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, or CDH, is a condition where there's a defect in the diaphragm. The diaphragm forms from about five different structures that all come together to need to form this muscular structure that separates the chest from the abdomen. If in the process of development one of those pieces don't come together, then a defect occurs where there's a hole in that diaphragm. Because the organs in the abdomen tend to grow faster than those in the chest, structures within the abdomen find their way through that hole into the chest. In, in essence, they herniate into the chest and that's why it's called a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. That procedure involves placement of a small balloon, it's a latex balloon, in the windpipe of the fetus, inside the mother's uterus and leaving it there for a specific amount of time be that uh, three weeks or four weeks, and then removing it. And by blocking off the trachea or the windpipe, the fluid that's produced normally in the lungs builds up behind that balloon and expands the lungs. Once patients enrolled, they'll be randomly selected to either receive in the tracheal balloon or not receive in the tracheal balloon, and then see how they go afterwards, looking at what their outcomes are, not just survival now, but how well the, the child is able to function, how the lungs function well, length of stay, how much oxygen they need, etc. Uh, and to see whether the balloon actually makes an improvement in that group. It's not as if we have a preconceived idea like we do with severe. With severe, we believe this therapy works. With moderate, we're not sure. And nobody's sure. And that then makes it ethically reasonable to randomly assign children to usual care, which is not getting a balloon, and balloon. And there's a 50% chance of getting into either arm of that study if you choose to participate. Nowhere will they just put a balloon in a baby with moderate CDH uh, outside of the trial. And that's an important distinction. So the only way that you could even be considered to have a balloon would be by participating in the trial. And by participating in the trial, you understand that there's a 50% chance that your child will not get a balloon. But we would then still expect you to be followed up and allow us to study uh, your pregnancy and the baby. I think the most important thing for all patients to understand when entering a randomized controlled trial is that just because they randomize to the non-intervention does not mean they're getting anything less. We are still unsure as to whether the intervention really works. It is perfectly possible that babies that get the balloon may have a better outcome. That is possible. And that's the reason for doing the trial. But we're not able to offer anybody who doesn't enroll in the trial a balloon. So the only way they could even qualify to get a balloon would be by entering the trial and enrolling in the trial. So in the moderate trial, we look to put the balloon in between 30 weeks and 32 weeks, and then remove that balloon at between 34 and 35 weeks. In the severe, we have frame shifted that back and the balloon generally needs to be in before 29 and 6 sevenths weeks. So we put the balloon in a little bit earlier because there are risks associated with putting in the balloon earlier. So in a moderate baby, we don't want to expose that baby to the same risk that we would take with a baby that has severe. The balloon simply allows the lungs to be expanded and the lungs to um, do better gas exchange after delivery. All of these children still need their diaphragmatic hernia repaired and that is usually done on the second or third day after the delivery. This is clearly a major commitment by the family, uh, by the referring physician, by the referring institution because when that balloon is in situ, i.e. inside the baby's windpipe, should that baby be born, it is an absolute 
medical emergency to remove that balloon. So we have teams of people that are trained to remove the balloon in an emergency. The aim is to remove the balloon before it becomes an emergency. So uh, hopefully the balloon will remain in situ for a specified amount of time and that can be uh, usually about four weeks, but maybe shorter than that time, depending on the patient and the response of the lungs. And then it gets removed, and then we wait for delivery. We believe that those patients should deliver here because of our team structure. The outcomes, as I've explained earlier, are not simply dependent on putting a balloon in. They're dependent on postnatal care, the repair, and everything else that we've taken years to develop that goes into the success of uh, a CDH procedure, a total or a feto balloon placement. But yes, those patients will need to remain in Houston, uh, usually at Ronald McDonald House. If they have the means, they can live uh, in an apartment close by, but they will need to be within 10 minutes of the hospital so that they can get here and have that balloon removed in an emergency. The first step is contacting the uh, nurses responsible for the maternal fetal medicine, and they will put the patient in contact with us. Then we're gonna go uh, through the uh, inclusion exclusion criteria to see if the patient fits the criteria. After that, the patient will have to uh, consent to participate in the trial, and that should be done by the parents, both mother and father. After consenting, I will go and randomize the patient through a website to see which arm the patient will go. Uh, depending on the arm, you will have the fetal procedure or you go into the standard of care. For patients considering entering into the trial, if they want more information, if they, they want to understand what are all the commitments involved with that, I would tell them to con first contact the nurses and the nurses will uh, give then my number or my email address and I'm open to answer any questions and to explain in detail what you will need to do during the whole uh, trial. Managing these patients, babies with diaphragmatic hernia, is a huge multidisciplinary effort. It does not simply involve putting a balloon in. It involves the correct imaging with radiology, the correct counseling uh, with our genetic counselors and all of the other members of our team. It involves managing the pregnancy. It involves the fetal intervention team putting the balloon in and removing the balloon. And then extremely importantly, it involves the pediatricians, the neonatal intensive care unit, the pediatric surgeons, the pulmonologists, the cardiologists, all of these people that form this very specific and specialized team to provide that care. We actually have a very well integrated team where all the parties are represented and we all work together in a very collaborative, very cohesive manner. And uh, we're intellectually diverse, we're culturally diverse, we're internationally diverse, we're, it's just a fascinating environment. And everyone from the nurses in the OR to the nurses on the floor to the care coordinators to the physicians, the cardiologists, the ultrasonographers, everybody feels like they're part of this team. And also having our own specific space and location also brings, again, there's that feeling of oneness that we all have because we're located in our area, we all know who we are, we all get together, and, and there's just that oneness that, that makes it unique and special. You know what you get when you come to Texas Children's. This is a place of excellence. It is uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, children's hospital uh, in the world, certainly in Texas. Um, there is a culture of innovation and excellence at this hospital, and it is just a great privilege to work here and uh, to, to get care here. So I don't believe there's any other facility on the planet that can match what we do and the care that we take of our patients at Texas Children's.